Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. There we go. Hallelujah. One of these days I'll get good at this. Thank God for Pastor Alan helping me here today. Praise God. Isn't it good that we get to worship, to get to hold, to be able to get a hold of God and be able to lay down some burdens, maybe rejoice over some victories that we've had during the the week. Whatever the case is, to be able to sing to the Lord is a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And so thank God for you joining us online and being able to praise God with us here today. A couple of announcements to share with you. Just want to remind you that we would really, 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 really appreciate you uh, shooting a testimony, a video testimony for us. Uh, That would be a great thing because we want to be able to insert them into our online services. That would be a great encouragement for those who are watching. You don't have to worry about editing it. If you can just get it over to me, that would be great. Uh, I think we have the email address online that you can look at and be able to or be able to send it to. uh, But whatever way you get it to us, we'll be fine. We'll take care of it from there. So really looking forward to sooner the better. Uh, It'd be great to have some for this Sunday. Praise God. Today we also want to remind you that we will be back again on Sunday at 11 a.m. online. Uh, We're getting through this uh, lockdown pretty good. We're almost uh, pushing through almost uh, one-fourth of it already, and so uh, it won't be long now. Uh, So don't forget, join us online 11 a.m. on Sunday. This evening, though, we want to pick up this evening's offering. We're going to go ahead and uh, begin to praise God and give God all the honor and glory. Maybe right there in your own home, you can lift up your hands and we'll just give God praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to be able to give to your name. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We praise you and we worship you. We thank you for providing for us. Even when we're fearful, Lord God, you meet every need. We pray for those who are struggling financially, Lord, that you would help them bless this offering, multiply it, and meet every need. In Jesus' name, amen. That uh, bank transfer information is either up on your screen or will be uh, right quickly. You can go ahead and uh, transfer money via bank transfer. That works out fine. We really appreciate those who are faithful in that area. It makes our lives here in the church uh, so much uh, easier. And so thank you very much. And God will bless you because whenever we offer anything to the Lord, He is well pleased with our actions. Praise God. So today we want to get into uh, this evening's or this evening's message. Thank you again for logging in. And today's message I've entitled "I Choose." I choose, and the reason is is because in the Christian life there's lots of choices that have to be made. As a matter of fact, I will say on a daily basis, you make choices that determine your direction and sometimes even your destiny. Not all choices uh, change or alter the course of your life. We know that, but some do, and we can read about them in the Bible. For example, Moses chose to help his fellow Jews over uh, personal personally obtaining the riches and the power of Egypt where he was at that time. Joseph chose obedience to God over yielding to that strong temptation that he had there in the king's palace. Daniel chose to eat meals of vegetables over the unclean meat at the table of the king of Babylon. And the reason I'm telling you this is these choices that these individuals made were major crossroads of their lives. It was those choices that they made that determined whether they would go down the right path or the wrong path. But the Bible also records people who made 
bad choices, poor choices at that crossroads. We see Adam in the Garden of Eden, that he cho his choice cost him paradise and had an effect on mankind from, the, from that time until now. Esau, you remember his choices cost him his birthright, his blessing. Saul, his decisions that he made cost him his kingdom. And of course, we know about Judas, his choice cost him his life. Why am I bringing this up to you today? Why is this so important? Is because God loves us so much that he has given us what we call free will. Why don't you say free will? God wants us to be able to have the ability to choose our own destiny. But with that ability also comes responsibility. And the Bible records in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 19, it says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. See, even though God wants you to choose life, he says, therefore, choose life, he will clearly show you, he will, the right choice to make. It's not like it'll be hidden, undercover, or secretive, but it's up to you, it's up to me, it's up to us to make the right choice. So today's message, I choose, we want to look at Abram in the book of Genesis chapter 12, and I want to read for you this call that Abraham had on his life. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 12, just the first verse, it says, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. First thing I want to talk with you about this evening is that you need to choose with care. Choose with care. See, here in this passage, Genesis 12, 1, God is asking Abram to make a difficult choice. And there will be times in your life and mine where we will be faced with difficult choices that are presented to us by God. For Abram, this was the call to his spiritual destiny. It would be his life's calling that he would get out of where he was at to the land that God would show him to. Abram, as you know, and many of you may know, that he was known as the father of faith. And this choice that he was going to make right here in Genesis 12, 1, was the beginning of that calling, fulfilling that calling. Unless he chose not to, then that whole father of faith thing would have gone by the wayside. What is my point here is that Abram had to choose. Would he remain in his country where he was uh, comfortable, where he was familiar, or would he go to God's country? It was up to him, would he choose his familiar way of life, or would he walk in faith in the uncertainty of God's way? I'd like to tell you that God's way is always certain, always easy to see, always clear cut. But honestly, brothers and sisters, at times it is not like that. The call of God is sometimes difficult to see, and that's why faith is required. For Abram, it was going to be his family or God's plan. His family or God's plan. And the reason I want you to see this today is because we live in a time where many Christians say, you know, family is everything. Family is of utmost importance. And I want to tell you, as a family man, family is extremely important. But I have to tell you that sometimes God tells us to leave family in order to fulfill his will and plan. 
Of course, this requires you to know God's will, to know God's plan. You just don't do this willy-nilly or because you're upset with your family member. You got into an argument and you don't want to be around them anymore. I'm not saying that at all. There are times, though, when God says, look it, my plan involves you following me. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 37, listen to what Jesus says. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross, take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. My point being here is that Jesus was saying, look it, you can't put anything before me. Your decisions have to be based on my word and my will, not on your emotions and not on your comfort. Now here in our text, Abram takes off and he begins to walk in this walk of faith. He begins to choose God's plan over his comfort and he decides or Lot, his nephew decided that he was going to come along with him. And Lot begins to pack up all of his worldly possessions and decides that he's going to follow after Abraham and Abraham's call. And so Lot begins to make decisions as well. Lot begins to make decisions as well. And so secondly, we want to talk about today is how Lot made his choice. Where did, how did he choose? And the reason we want to discuss this is because how a person decides on what basis a person makes a decision is telling as to what's going on into their life. And as we read it here in the Bible, it's also helpful for us to begin to look at our own lives. First of all, before we read another passage, I want to tell you that Abram and Lot were both acquiring wealth as they were carrying on, as they were walking into the uh, will and the destiny of God. God was blessing them. Possessions were beginning to grow, kind of like people's lives as they serve God over time. God begins to bless them. And that's what was happening here with Abram and Lot. And so in the book of Genesis chapter 13 and verse 5 through seven, it says this, Lot also who went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents, and now the land was not able to support them that they may dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. (laughs) That's the blessing of God, isn't it? And verse seven says, and there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Parasites then dwelt in the land. Here we see next in the book of Genesis chapter 13 and verse 8 and 9, Abram says to Lot, please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. If you go to the right, then I will go to the left. See, what they were experiencing here were the common issues of life. Their uh, possessions were growing. The land couldn't support them. They had to make decisions, just like you have to make decisions in your life. As life begins to evolve and begins to change, you have to make decisions But sometimes those decisions that we make carry the seed of our futures. The decision that Lot was going to make right here was going to determine where he was going to be in the weeks and years to come. So first of all, in the book of Genesis chapter 13, verse 10 and 11, it says this, And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, and that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go toward Zor. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated 
from each other. So what we're looking at now is how Lot, on what basis did Lot make his choice and his decision? First of all, there was strife between Abraham's workers, Abraham's herdsmen, and Lot's herdsmen. So I have to ask the question, did he make the decision based on the strife that he was experiencing? This sometimes is how people make decisions. They sometimes get to the point where they say, you know what, I'm just fed up with this drama. I'm going to move on. You know, I can understand that. We've all been at that place in our lives where it's been difficult and there's problems and it seems like just a, a, a moving along will be better for all concerned. But I have to tell you that when God says, look it, I'm sending you to a place where there will be conflict. And you say, well, no, I want peace. God's sending you to a place where strife is going to be part of the daily affairs because he wants you in that place. You have to choose not on the basis of your peace, but on the basis of God's will. This is a very difficult decision to make, but it happens oftentimes. Maybe in your own marriage or with your children, things are not going well. Things are, uh, 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 th- you're struggling over certain issues. Maybe at work or even in church sometimes in ministry, there's that conflict and that strife. And you're tempted to make a decision based on how can I get rid of the drama? How can I get rid of the conflict? And kind of saying, look it, this is conflict. This is life. This is where I want you. You are to be a peacemaker, not just a person who enjoys peacefulness. See, so we don't know what was going on here, but it bears uh, taking time to think as to why he was making this decision. Secondly, we see that he chose with his eyes. The Bible says Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan. He made a decision based on what he could see. If you think about this just a little more deeply than just reading those words there, he was focusing on this plain of Jordan. He made a conscious decision to look at that. He knew that he had to separate from Abraham, so his decision was going to be based on what he could see. I wonder how many times we've made decisions based on what we can see, what's right in front of us. I know sometimes uh, I've heard of people that have gotten married because it was, she was the only girl available. He was the only guy here. He, it's all I had. It was what was right in front of me. And I get it. Sometimes we have to go with what's right in front of us, but other times we make bad decisions when we make decisions based solely upon what we can see. He chose based on what was important to him. He was increasing. His herdsmen were increasing. His livestock was increasing. He saw this well-watered land and said, this will be good for me. See, this is a common basis for making choices, but not always a good one. The Bible says here in verse 11, then Lot chose for himself, chose for himself. This was the basis of his decision. He decided he was going to take what was best for him. His love was in the wrong place. His love was on what he could see. His love was on himself. His love was focused on this world and nothing else. Abram made this decision to get out of his country and go to the new land, not just so he could prosper, but so he could do the will of God. Lot, on the other hand, made the decision to go out into the new land to see what he could gain and see what he could glean and to see how much blessings God would give him. And he made decisions based on that motivation. He was in love with the world. The Bible tells us about a man named Demas in the New Testament. He was labeled as one of Paul's co-workers, fellow laborers. He was a companion of Paul. He assisted him in the long and hard work of being a missionary. But yet, in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 10, the Bible says that Timothy, or or that uh, 
uh, Demas left Paul. And the reason he left Paul was because now his affections had shifted. He began to fall in love with the world. The Bible says in that verse, for Demas in love with this present world has deserted me. When we look at Lot, he didn't desert Abraham, but he made his decision based on his love for this present world. He was not thinking about the future. And if you read about all that took place in Sodom and Gomorrah, all that took place where Lot had gone to, you will realize that that was a poor decision based on him choosing for himself. Demas had made good choices at one time, but he made bad choices in the end. I wrote in my notes, last year's choices does not guarantee good choices this year. Just because you have had a track record of making good choices doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be guaranteed to make good choices. Can you say amen? Let's move on. As Christians, our decisions must not be based on Lot's criteria. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Can you see how Lot might have made his decisions based on the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes? The pride of life as he was growing and things seemed to be good and going well in his life. Rather than making decisions based on what God had for him, a love for God, a love for the Father. So here we move along and we ask ourselves as we looked at how Lot made his choice, not on a good uh, decision making here, but how do we make the right choice? What is it that we do? How can we uh, kind of make the right choice in decisions that we have to make? Before we answer that, a couple of things I'd like to uh, clarify or bring out as kind of ground rules for this is one is no, no one, no matter how wise, no matter how mature, no matter how spiritual, makes the right choice every time. We are all going to make poor choices from time to time. That's why we rely on God's grace, on God's favor, on God helping us. So don't kick yourself while you're down if you've made a poor choice here or there. You can get back up and move on. God's grace is there. Maybe you're suffering under the uh, decision that you've made and sometimes past. I want to encourage you that God has good things for you and that his grace is sufficient for today and able to help you. Secondly, there is no one size fits all for choosing wisely. There's not just one easy peasy formula for uh, making good choices, but there is some general help that I think will help us. And so an example of someone who has chose wisely is is David. Now you may say, wow, King David, didn't he make some bad choices? He he certainly did. But early on in his life, he made some good choices when he uh, uh, began to fight against Goliath. And so I just want to look at that passage there to show you how he made decisions that can help us in making our present day decisions. Turn with me in your Bibles, tap through into the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17. The passage is too long to put up on the screen, but I'd like you to read along with me. It's a common passage. We've preached and you've heard other pastors preach on it loads of times. Nevertheless, It's good for us today. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 32, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. 
So just a reminder, remember that this Philistine, his name was Goliath, he was a giant, had been tormenting the armies of Israel, and they were just losing battle after battle to this uh, big, massive giant. And David tells King Saul that he will go and fight. Verse 33, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised uh, Philistine uh, shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who has delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Now I want you to just see, first of all, before we discuss his decision-making process here, is that the Israelites had fought against Goliath many times, but they did not make choices to fight Goliath. They did it because they had to. They were in the armed forces of Israel. David, on the other hand, chose willingly to fight Goliath. There are going to be times in your life when you're going to have to make decisions to go up against the enemy. You're going to have to make choices willingly to fight against your Goliath, to do things that the rest of the world might be defeated over, but by faith you're going to make a decision to fight. David chose willingly to fight Goliath. His decision was based partly on past victories. It's important to keep a list of your victories. It's important to remember the times when God delivered you. It's a good thing to begin to reminisce over the times that God has done great things in your life. I don't want you to live in the past. I don't want you to become nostalgic. But I do want you to remember how the Lord was with you when you did maybe just common tasks like tending your whatever. He was tending his father's flock. Memory can serve you well if you focus on the right things. David chose rightly because he recognized that the Lord was with him. So as you begin to sit down and ponder a decision, you have to ask yourself, is the Lord with me in this decision? Because that's the part of the criteria for making godly choices. Because sometimes people look and go, wow, I have a decision to make here. If I don't choose right, bad things are going to happen. If I choose wisely, good things are going to happen. And they act as if God is just far off. I want to tell you, you have to pray not so much for wisdom on the choice to make, but Lord, are you with me? You have to know, is the Lord with you whichever way you go? Because the Lord was with David, and he chose rightly because he recognized that. Requires some spiritual sensitivity to choose wisely. Lot did not have that spiritual sensitivity, did he? He chose basically because this was going to bless him. Financially, his wealth was going to increase, and he paid a mighty price for that. You can read in Genesis 19 about all that took place with Lot as his decision. Abram, on the other hand, being gracious, says, Whichever way I go, the Lord's going to be with me. Lot, you choose. If I go this way, God will be with me. If I go that way, God's going to be with me. David made that decision. Is the Lord with you? Then you can choose with a lot more confidence, knowing that he's with you. After he made this decision, another thing happened. Saul, King Saul said, go, the Lord is with you, no problem. Go ahead and fight against Goliath. And then he tried to fit David with his traditional armor. 
He gave David his own coat of mail and uh, all the helmets and all that he needed, but it didn't fit. It didn't fit. Saul was a large man. David was not. But not only was it not fitting, it was ill-fitting physically, it also wasn't tested by David. It was not the right kind of thing for David. And David said, look, I can't wear this armor. And he goes down to the brook and he chooses the five smooth stones. You've read that. You know about it. We've talked about it before. See, the point that I'm trying to make is that the decision here to go and fight, if he was going to use Saul's armor, that didn't fit David's style. You have to make decisions based on who you are and what kind of person you are. And you're going to have to make decisions sometimes that other people are not going to fully understand. You have to make decisions based on God's wisdom, God's understanding, choosing the five smooth stones. Why did he choose stones as his weapon of choice? It's not clear. It's not clear. But one thing we do know is that it was the right choice. It was a good decision because it was God's choice. He understood that he was trusting in the Lord to win the battle, and David chose accordingly. So I ask you today, as you begin to make decisions for your life, choices for your life, who are you making choices for? Is it for you and you personally, or is it for the Lord and the Lord's will? Abram was doing the will of God. Lot was doing the will of himself. David made the choices for God to win the battle for the Lord and not for himself. And so the good news is tonight, as we wrap this up, is that if you will be willing to choose wisely, because it really comes down to willingness, if you're willing to choose wisely, God will be with you and you will be able to see great victory David chose wisely, and he won. It's good when you choose wisely, you have victory. And victory is yours when you choose God's plan. I know most of you are Christians watching, most of you are strong Christians. And you say, why are you talking to me like that? I always choose God's plan. I'd say, wait a minute. Sometimes we don't. A lot of times our flesh can be involved. Our carnality can be involved. But when we choose God, victory comes our way. God is willing to bless us. God is willing to meet every one of our needs. So tonight, you choose. You choose. But if you choose wisely, great victory will come your way. Some of you, and I say this by the word of the Lord, some of you are going to be facing decisions in the very near future. Choose wisely. Lay down your own desires and put God's will in God's plan. He may be saying, hey, get out of the familiar. Get out of what you're comfortable with. This is going to cost you something, but I've got a plan for your life. Make your decisions based on my will and my destiny and not merely on your own peace and comfort. Let's pray here tonight as we close. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for the free will that we have. We thank you, Lord, that you have predestined salvation. We thank you, Lord, that there are things that are set in stone that no man can change. But we are also so grateful that we get to choose life. We thank you that we can choose salvation. We ask tonight, Lord, that each one of us would be blessed and encouraged, strengthened and able and willing to choose as Abram chose, to choose uh, as David chose. Help us to be those types of followers, those types of believers. And we pray this today in Jesus' name. Maybe you're watching today and you're not a Christian. We always want to reach out to those who are not born again because the Bible says unless a man, unless a person be born again, He cannot enter the kingdom of God. But the Bible tells us that if we would confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died and rose from the dead, that we could be saved, that we could have new life. 
All of your sins can be washed away, and that's good news. I know people don't talk about sin very often. The world doesn't talk about sin. It doesn't care about sin. You can do kind of whatever you want nowadays, but the Bible is clear as to what's sin and what is not, and sin can be forgiven by God through Jesus Christ, only through Jesus Christ. So I'm going to say a prayer, and if you're listening today, we want you to pray this prayer with us, and God will come into your heart. Jesus will forgive you of your sins. You'll be able to experience the new eternal life that the Bible promises. Pray with me here today. Heavenly Father, I come before you as a sinner. I admit that I've sinned. I admit I've done wrong. I ask Jesus to cleanse me. I put my trust in Jesus. I pray that you would teach me to live for you. And I ask this today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for letting us pray with you today. Brother and sister, I hope I was able to get this message out. Again, I'm trying to get focused back on this um, uh, online type of speaking here. It's not as easy as it may look to you. But I hope that you could gather that we make many decisions. Sometimes we make good choices. Sometimes we make bad choices. But some of those choices are monumental in their outcome. And they affect our future, small and large. And we should do our best to not just walk and live willy-nilly, but to make decisions wisely. We tried to lay that out for you today. And we're praying that you would make wise choices, wise decisions in your life. Continue to pray for our online services. We really need God's presence to help us with these. We really need the liberty of God to be upon us We can feel the presence of the enemy, but we are more than conquerors uh, through Jesus who loved us. And so keep us in prayer. All of us here at New Harvest are praying for you guys and believing God with you uh, for you, uh, your life, and your family. God bless you, and thank you for logging on. We'll see you back next service. Send in your video testimonies. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, The easiest way is via our website at www.newharvestuk.com. You can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on Facebook or Twitter. You can call us on 0161 278 6305 or you can even write to us at 194 Chapel Street, Salford, Manchester, M3 6BY. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services. However you might be feeling, and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you, and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you, we're praying for you, and once again, thank you for listening.